nobody has a perfect genetic code, right? We all carry hundreds to thousands of misspellings and variations. Um, the real challenge today is not to identify those by our sequencing technology, but the real challenge is to interpret them and to find the ones that are most meaningful. So I would say that this gene chose me rather than I chose the gene. It was just a particular, I would say, luck that I had a patient with a de novo frame shifting mutation in that gene. That However, not a disorder that's being passed from one generation to the next. In fact, all of the cases that we identified are de novo mutations, which means that the affected patient carries the mutation, but none of the parents does. So when Dr. Volkiewicz discovered um, several patients um, in our database with mutations in the exact same gene, the SON gene, um, and passed that information along to me, I had the really thrilling opportunity of being involved in kind of discovering that the patients shared the same features. Um, and had similar types of mutations, and the project sort of took off from there. The group here at Baylor, especially at the Human Genome Sequencing Center, um, they have been leaders in the field, um, and they have developed um, tools and software tools and um, algorithms of analysis um, that have moved the field forward. The SON um, gene encodes a protein, also called SON, that's been previously shown to be involved in both constitutive and alternative splicing which is a, a very fundamental uh, mechanism that the cell uses to turn DNA into protein. Um, in addition to that, SON has been shown to be involved in um, DNA replication and cell division. This research is relevant to my field because it provides a new uh, disease gene that is um, explaining a phenotype for patients that have previously not had a, a disease associated with their phenotype. So this is very exciting because uh, for these families with children with, those, with this particular disorder, um, they are able to connect between themselves and they can form a community. Some of these individuals that we report in the manuscript are already in their teenage or young adult years and they have gone through an extensive workup, an extensive diagnostic workup when they were young children. However, no answers were found, even though they had multiple rounds of molecular testing. And that's simply because the technology with which we now identified their mutations was not available at the time. It's really remarkable and humbling to see these families coping with such adversity. Um, and in spite of that, um, being willing to share their personal medical information um, so that other people can benefit from this knowledge. This publication and the stories of the lives involved uh, shows very beautifully that we should never give up. Um, I think we should never give up as physicians and we should never give up as parents trying to find answers for our patients or our children.